I now have the great pleasure of uh, moving on to someone that you may have heard before on um, this channel. It's our very own Herb. Um, proudly with a picture of Portsmouth Spinnaker Tower in the background, just for our international visitors who didn't recognize where, where he is. Um, and Herb's also going to talk about plugins tonight. It's a plug-in night for us today. Herb, are you ready to, to present? Um, yep. We, we, um, well, while Herb's just getting ready, we're, um, we're got a very interesting screens tonight. We've got Steve and his lovely dog in the, in the picture. So lovely to see that. Um, and we've had Scott and his daughter, they start starting young. I'm getting them into WordPress, which is which is great. Future organisers. So I'll <laughs> hand over to to Herb. Right. Can you see that? Yes. Right. Um, for a very long time now, I've been writing code, and in PHP, oops, stop it. In PHP, I've been doing sort of debugging without using a debugger because the first reason I didn't have a debugger and then secondly I wasn't able to debug things as easily as I thought I could by using this system called tracing which is to which is like a tracer bullet you fire a stream of bullets from a machine gun and every now and then a one that you can see comes out so you can see where it's going and this is what tracing is all about so I've written a plugin called Oik BW Trace, which is available on WordPress.org, and it's the 29,000th most popular plugin, which isn't very high on the list, because it is a rather detailed plugin. You do have to be a developer to, to really be able to make use of it. And I've tried giving a demonstration of it to Andrew on his website. We had a couple of problems with the technical aspects of it, and we never got any further than actually getting it up and running we never got the chance to use it to see why his system was running a bit slower than he really wanted it to. Um, so in these slides I'm going to show you what it's like if you're writing PHP and you want to find out what's going on in the system and then to basically introduce my solution to it which does all the things that you would have wanted to do yourself. So we're going to give you a little overview of PHP here. And we go the right way, shall we? Right, so who is who knows nothing about PHP? On the left hand side is a bit of hey, stop it. On the left hand side is a bit of code which is setting a variable to a value and then echoing out the result and it's doing it for a string and an array and a thing called an object and it's echoing the data out in different forms because you can't use echo for a whole array and you can't use other things every single time you want to do something that's not a very good explanation so here we can see this array has been set to first and second. First, the zeroth item is set to first and the first item is set to second and the print R routine printed out as array zero first and second. Now if you're writing some PHP code and you're running on the command line, you can have it displaying its output to you and then every now and then you can start echoing out these values that you want to debug. Um, eventually you get confused as to which is the output you meant to have output to the screen and which is the output was the debugging stuff. So you start trying to introduce some other information. You might need to know where this debugging information comes from. PHP provides that information by giving you things like the file name of the source and the line number of the source. Stop it. So in this function, where am I? Echoing the file name and it's called well.php and the line number of this line here is 25 and this thing here the debug backtrace is showing very simply where this function is called in the whole hierarchy of function invocations 
functions can invoke functions. So where am I invokes a function called printr and printr invokes a function called debug backtrace. But here we can only see one function listed because this is recorded from the top level of the routine. Everyone confused? No, let's assume you're not. <laughs> now in WordPress, things happen mostly because of things called action hooks or filters. An action hook is something that happens when WordPress says, I've got to this point in the processing here, maybe you need to do something yourself and you hook into that thing. So for instance, admin notices, you might then want to produce a message like, um, uh, what's your least favorite plugin? like Yoast SEO that says, you know, I've just upgraded and you can speed up your website because of this marvelous thing we've done. And they, they hook into admin notices to do that. So you can find that out by using current filter. Another way of looking at it is to, is to think, well, which filter am I in and which filter is that within? So we can find that information about the context of your calls and where you are in the process. That's some of the information you need. Some more information you might want to know is, okay, where are, we, where are we in the code? How many times have we done this? How many times have things gone wrong? What's the time now? How long have we been doing this? Um, um, how many of these different hooks have we performed? How many queries have we performed? What are we currently dealing with? How much memory have we used? How many files have we loaded up in the system at the moment? Um, and when you've got a parameter function being called, what are the parameters that are actually being passed to it? So lots of information that's useful to have. You can get this if you're using a debugger, like xdebug, but it might not be so easy to get if you just if you choose, try to type in your echoes or print R's. Other things you might want to know from right from the start is what were the requests that we're trying to respond to and what were the parameters that were passed in the ones that got into the global variable request or get or post. What is the request type? Is it a front end request? Is it an AJAX request? Is it a REST thing? Or is this a command line invocation? Um, what is it we're actually trying to look for whilst we're processing our tracing? You might have a specific thing you're trying to do. And how important is it to know all the nuts and bolts? Do, are we working at a very verbose level of debugging or can we work at a slightly higher level? And then finally, you can say at shutdown, so can we produce an overall picture of what happened and produce something very similar to what Query Monitor produced? But the way I produce all my stuff is I write this to plain text files, which are written to the server and not written to the browser, so they can be used for any request that's performed, whether it's a cron request or a front end request or somebody trying to do something nasty using XML RPC or you using your block editor. So there'll be lots and lots of rest requests going on and being recorded and logged. So how do we configure this plugin? I provide a simple admin interface where you specify where you want to put the output files Stop it. Um, uh, what output files you want to produce, whether or not you're interested in tracing uh, AJAX requests or REST requests. Most people aren't. Um, and do you want to have an overall view of what's been going on in your website whilst you've been doing it, a daily trace summary? Um, when you're choosing what level of tracing to do, you can decide the level of tracing from a very high level of errors only uh, down to verbose which is sort of one level higher than debug and you can decide when in the trace records you produce if you tell me the full qualification of the file name as opposed to the relative one which is useful if you're using symlinked plugins how many records you produced and the timestamp and all the other different things i said you might be interested in having so if you do that you can turn on install the trace plugin activate it turn these things on 
and then you can start getting some output. If you want to make calls yourself to produce trace output, you can use two APIs. One's called BW Trace 2, because it was the second one I wrote, and another one's called Backtrace. So this one shows you the data, and Backtrace shows you where you are. So in this function, how do I program it? BW Trace 2 will trace the fact that it's been called and it will show you the values of the parameters. And a BW backtrace will show you the where it, where this is in the process, which is just the first function inside the main routine. And then this one here, it will trace out the actual value of the variable called value. And so it will produce all the other trace information it would normally produce on the trace record. And then finally, we just show the value of it. And that's not particularly useful. So it's nice to have a little bit of um, context to it. So here we can say when we're tracing array, which will trace both values of this array, that this is called array. So it'll be prefixed with array and it will show you the two values of array. And these additional parameters, false and verbose, say I don't need to trace the values of the parameters that have been passed in here. I just want to trace this value and I want to do this only when tracing it is a very verbose. Level. Um, so it now writes some output. Because I've selected to write output to the daily trace summary file, we get a, a file which is beautifully named bwtrace.vt and then the timestamp or time date, and it contains a list of all of the things that have happened so far. So this morning when I visited this website, S dot b slash wordpress and that is the url i accessed inside my system it seemed to take 5.7 seconds to do something probably because off it went to wordpress instead of any updates and all that sort of stuff and also because of a woocommerce in there as well we'll test something else and as you can see, here's an Ajax request for a WooCommerce Ajax request, which isn't exactly an Ajax request, saying get the refresh fragments for the cache. That's the list of all the different things we can see here. That it's saying that the output for each, each transaction is being traced to individual files. And in BW trace 3 BW traces .loh two, which isn't the one we got here, it's trace the output of that request. In another request, we can, which is the nine one here, we can see that the request I was performing was, I was just going to the dashboard. And this is the output that has been traced. Now, until you've done it hundreds of times, you won't really know what all these different things are, and you won't, but you might start realizing the sort of information that can be recorded. Now that's the APIs you can use out of the box. It just provides that I've started and here's a few things happening. And then you can say, I wanted to have it produce more things. And one thing that I like to have a look at is to see how many different hooks and filters are being invoked and get an overall view of how the system is actually operating. When I'm trying to find out why, where something is, is happening, you need to have some idea which hook it might be being performed for, especially if you want to make some changes to it. And therefore, you have the ability to produce a list of everything it's done in a particular request, and you can view that output and then decide, okay then, so when it's doing this, what is actually happening in this? And here we can produce some special ad hoc output where you can say, all right, so if the function was in it, what's happening during in it? Let's see where we are in the process. Let's have a look at who is attached to the init, fun init function and might be doing something. And let's see the sequence in which these you know, things are happening. And you can even say, so exactly what, where am I when this thing is occurring? Now, all of this is something that you only would get into if you happen to be writing some plugin or theme and you, you want to find out why it's not quite working and how to change it. Or you might have somebody say, if you could produce a trace output of where something's gone wrong, 
for example, where the error warning or notice has been produced, then we've got some idea of what we can do to find the piece of code which is actually going wrong. And then with the other information available from trace records, you can find out what the data is going wrong with is, and therefore, and therefore possibly how to resolve the problem. Um, this, this solution also works for when you're invoking multiple filters at the same time against a piece of data. For example, the content filter is hooked into by many, many different plugins, all trying to add their own different thing, and they're all doing it at different levels of priority. Priority one being happening first and priority 999 happening last, or priority minus infinity happening first and plus infinity happening last. And so you can actually have a look when you're filtering data, what the result is at any level in the filtering process through the different priorities. Far too detailed for you, isn't it? So at the end of the day, the idea is you run trace and you use it to find out what's actually happened in your website. And if you can get the output in a consistent format, then you can have a good idea understanding the whole process. And we can do it, use tracing to trace output for front end and schedule requests, AJAX and REST requests, and in command line invocations like WPCLI. We can create a summary file daily to find out what's actually happened in the system. And you can use that to find out how long your server is taking to do everything and what resources are being used whilst it's doing it all. And if you need to find out exactly how something's being processed and we can start looking at all the different hooks and the sequence and all that sort of stuff. And that was a very brief overview without actually showing you the plugin. Um, but if you wanna find out more about the plugin, then you can visit the website, download it from WordPress, get it from GitHub, or you can find out how, what I do about problem solving by reading my website called Problem Solving. And that is it. Are you all completely bemused? Thank you Herb, for sharing that and for going through the different aspects. Um, as I'm sure you all probably know that many of the contributors to, to WordPress um, write, write plugins, sometimes um, one or two, sometimes many more. And it's a great way of contributing. It's a great way of finding a solution to something that you've experienced and, and going, okay, I'm gonna find a way to improve that for everybody. So I'm gonna invite people to, to ask questions of, of Herb. You can either send a message to one well, of the organizers in the chat or, um, or raise your hand or just start talking. So um, Steve, was that you were asking, you ready to ask a question? No, you just took <laughs> your mic, okay. Just make, making sure that there's anybody there who uh, was asking. Um, Scott, you've always got a, a handy question. So can I, can I take, go to you first of all? Go on. I haven't got anything this time. <laughs> <laughs> I've had one question come in um, asking, can you just explain Herb a bit about the Ajax? Um, so they're still typing, hold on, sorry. Um, about why Ajax is important and, and if you've got any suggestions of where to go to learn a bit more about it. Why Ajax is important. Ajax is, is where requests come in from the browser when you're not pressing enter to refresh the page, but it's being invoked by JavaScript. And this is, this is how the WordPress admin used to work, I suppose, when it was improved so it can perform things and look nice and pretty. So if you're using the admin interface to update your plugins, nowadays you click on the plugin, say update, and it does it as you watch. And what happens is an Ajax request goes off to the system and the server does it and it sends back a 
reply. AJAX stands for Asynchronous JavaScript and XML. And nowadays it's no longer XML, it's actually Asynchronous JavaScript and JSON, but we don't change the name of the... Mm. It's, AJAX is getting less important now as people are using the REST API. And REST is another acronym that stands for something important, I can't remember. And this is as, an, as another way of accessing data, which is basically sort of generally available, uh, except when it comes to performing an update and you have to have access is controlled by WordPress authentic, um, what's the correct? capability logic. And they both reply with JSON stuff, but there's and there's a slight difference between how REST requests are invoked and AJAX requests are invoked. But if you happen to be a person that has no ability to see what's going on in the server, very difficult to actually debug them if, just by using Echo because that will affect the output you get back to the browser and that will cause the browser to not work which is why I have to write everything to files, because you can't write anything back to the browser where these things happen. Did I nearly answer it? I, I, I think you have, but I think you've got a second question that's come in. Mm -hmm. um, and, and again, I'm just waiting for someone to finish typing, because um, it... What, what I was going to do is possibly expand on part of what Herb's said about his Ajax stuff. The best example of use of an Ajax call today is when you're doing like the secure passwords and you've got the little thing that keeps going up and down to tell you how strong your password is. Every time you're typing letters in, that's normally an Ajax call to work out the mathematical equation of how secure your password is. Ooh. So what it does is it sends off what you're doing to a backwards um, check. It re then returns it to the browser and it goes yes or no. And that's how you get the different colors on the bar it's normally an ajax call normally thank you scott that's, right. that's very cool um the other quote has come in it's um herb just disappeared on my screen so i'm hoping you're still mm. there um is whether the plugin herb that you've just shared how technical do you have to be to be able to use it uh, rather so it's another one of our technical plugins it's a technical that we're featuring. Plugin, yes. Its purpose is to help developers like myself find out what's going on in the system. All right, let's have a look. Shall we? You need to be a, a developer. This bit of the. Can you see that, Scott? My oh. logging in thing? Yeah. Yeah. Mm. This is true, of course, but it doesn't check my password here, does it? So where are you talking about? Oh, no, um, you can get like the, a lot of sites where you put in like the passwords and you've got the, the fancy um, like colored bars underneath. All right, yeah. Usually when you're setting up a new account or something, you, you have to yeah. a password, it tells you whether it's strong or weak. That's or the ones. Yeah. I know a lot of them are possibly moving to jQuery now. But well, there you go. Here's another example of it. Did a health check site status result when I logged in there. Right, lots of things happened. So this is the, the daily log. Somewhere back here, you'll find me trying to log in here. So I logged out at that point there. And then I got the logged out message. Then I tried to log in and I failed because I didn't get the right thing. Then I did it again and that one worked. Then I got in, you went to WordPress and WordPress then loaded up. Did a bit of REST API processing here. And this was traced to a file called bwtrace.rest.2. And I did a bit of Ajax stuff and that was traced to Ajax.8. And then we did a bit of Yoast did a bit of stuff as well, and that went to here. And then we had a health check, and that went to there. So lots and lots of things happened. I didn't just log in and I went to the admin screen. All those different things happened as well. And for each one of those different things, I've written out a 
trace output, output file. So let's look at that one, not seven. Here we can see this is a WordPress Yoast V1 statistics request. This is the value of the global variable server, which is sometimes useful to know about. So I'll bang that out first. These are the different things I'm trying to trace at the moment. And here are a series of different trace records. Here's one of my plugins wanting to find out what plugins are currently active. Well, no, in the system. I've got a lot in this development system. And so it goes on. And here's a load of data being produced from the calculate shipping function of one of my, work, my plugins showing the contents of my shopping cart. And it just goes on and on and on and on. So if you have no knowledge of any data that you're using, then this doesn't make any sense. But once you realize you're using something which is the shopping cart contents, then you can actually look at the data and say, yep, that's the value. That's the wrong value. I need to go and make a fix to it. This output is quite a lot of output, and therefore it does take some time um, writing it out, and therefore this sort of thing can slow the system down a bit. So my requests will take longer when run with tracing on, because based on the amount of output that's been actually traced. And the whole of this request took 2.7 seconds to invoke. And it traced 27,829 times. Wonderful. The poor man's query monitor is here. Here's all the different SQL statements that are being performed and the summary of how long they all took. None of them seem to take much time at all. And here's the actual details of that stuff. So if I want to look at the stuff, I don't really need to use query monitor, but I would use query monitor at certain times, especially when it's something to do with themes, or maybe it's the um, HTTP requests that are going on. Enough of that. Thank you for that, Herb. If there's any more questions on the plugins that we've looked at tonight? No. Well, thank you all of our presenters tonight, um, Steve, Herb and Bernard. It's been very, very useful and um, we've all learned quite a bit about things to try and where it would be appropriate. But also for those who don't um, manage their own websites, plugins that they might want to talk to their developers about. So, so thank you for that and 